Hey, welcome back to Hardly Tech. Today we'll be checking out Halo Infinite. Here are the in-game settings that I used at the beginning. Everything was maxed out at 1080p on the i5 4690K with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory running at 2133 megahertz and a GTX 1050 Ti set at 100% power limit and not overclocked. One other thing of note, however, is that I didn't capture the footage on this PC specifically. I connected it to my modern gaming PC using a capture card so that I could get as much performance as possible on the older PC for gaming. I had mentioned a while back that I had tried using the i5-4690K along with the GTX 1050Ti for some gaming to try and get some footage featuring modern games on older hardware and that I had had a lot of trouble getting it to actually work properly. So here's one example. I had a hard time getting Halo Infinite to actually run on this hardware. I did manage to capture some gameplay, but what you'll see in the first half here is a lot of the problems I was having. When I would load a weapon, sometimes the character would reset completely, or the character would load without arms. Interesting. I tried setting uh, the in-game settings down to like high and medium presets, I even tried changing the character animation setting, and nothing really made a difference. You can see that sometimes during specific animations or interactions, uh, like with grenades or during shooting, it, it would just drop my character out of the combat and set me as a respawn. Nothing I changed really, really made a difference here, so I ended up ending the match and uh, exiting the game, leaving everything on medium. I increased the power limit on the 1050 Ti, and even though it didn't draw any more power, it seemed like it evened out performance a little bit. And honestly, it could have just been reloading the game with different settings that helped here. After reloading, I managed to get one good match in. So we'll take a look at performance using this as our metric for the 1050 Ti. As you can see, for the most part, Frame rate is above 30 FPS. Sometimes we even manage to hit into the low 40s, though it doesn't last very long. And power consumption is very good, about 70 to 75 watts on the GPU, and only about 90 watts on the CPU. Temps are also very good. The CPU and the GPU are both hovering right around 50 Celsius, with both being maxed out in their performance. The CPU is utilizing all cores and going as hard as it can. The GPU as well. And all things considered, I'd say this is a win. Outside of the performance issues that we had getting character animations and dropouts during gaming, the 1050Ti is doing a pretty good job here. 1080p, 30fps, it's only at medium settings, but even at higher settings it does pretty well, usually hovering right around 30fps. Now I had mentioned that I was only able to get one good match in. After I finished this match, I left and went to a different map and as soon as I loaded, I started having the same problems that I had in the first match. Character dropouts during firing or using grenades. My character arms would disappear during, during gameplay just at random. So I tried using the 1050Ti in my modern system and all of those problems disappeared. I didn't gain a lot of performance from the GPU side of things, but I didn't have character dropouts, I didn't have matches ending, I didn't have animations disappearing. So I went back and tried the GPU on the old system, the 4690K system, and downclocked the RAM a bit to 1600 and loosened the timings to see if maybe it was a RAM issue, and it wasn't. It was the same problem. So my assumption here is that the instruction sets that Halo Infinite uses and requires from the CPU aren't supported by the 4690K, and some of the tasks can't properly be offloaded through brute force using the CPU. I had even tried playing a few other modern games using the i5 and the 1050Ti, two of them being Far Cry 6 and Forza Horizon 5, and neither game would actually load for me at all using this setup. It didn't matter how I clocked the CPU, the RAM, the GPU, it didn't matter how many times I tried to load, it just wouldn't, the games would not play. Far Cry 6 would end up booting and then crashing before I even got to the settings tabs, and Forza Horizon 5 it just, it'd get stuck in a boot loop. It would load, and then it would crash, and then it would restart and load, and then it would crash. So I tried the same thing I tried with Halo Infinite, and I moved the 1050 Ti to my modern system, and all of the problems went away. The games would load and play properly, just at a low frame rate, because it's a 1050 Ti. So that's all I have for you concerning the i5-4690K paired with the GTX 1050 Ti for now. I'm gonna start using the 1050Ti in some games in my modern system, just to see what kind of performance we can get on the older GPU 
in modern titles. I did promise a while back I would check out Diablo 2 Resurrected with the 1050 Ti, and I still plan on doing that here soon. And I've got a couple other projects in the works that I'm excited for. So if you'd like to keep up to date on those projects, hit that subscribe all and hit that like button. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to help support the channel directly, you can find me over on Patreon at Hardly Tech. And if you'd like to chat with me about projects and keep up on the day-to-day, -day, check me out over on Twitter at Hardly underscore Tech. I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye-bye.